Hey guys, I'm Leo Reinhardt, the Guitar Maniac, and this episode is kind of inspired by your questions. You see, I've been using this guitar a lot lately, and a lot of my friends, mostly musicians, and my students asked me what kind of guitar is this, where can they find this one, and I've got the same kind of questions in the comments. And for those who are interested what kind of guitar is this, this is G Great, the worst electric guitar in my entire collection. Here is a simple rule about electric guitars. If you want a perfect instrument and you are not limited by your budget, you can go wrong with the ones that are made in USA, Europe or Japan. The material and labor costs and taxes are pretty high in these countries, that makes the instrument expensive. And how do you sell expensive instrument? You make it high quality. There are a lot of instruments on the market made in Asian countries such as China, Indonesia or South Korea. The production is much cheaper in these countries and I can't say anything about its quality. There are high quality instruments like Ibanez Premium Series or there are instruments that are kind of good for the price like this LTD B335 bass guitar. This is actually good and a proper upgrade, it can compete with high quality instruments as well. There are instruments as well that are good for beginners, but not for professional work. And of course there are instruments that you should avoid at any cost. And because my students are mostly teenage kids who don't have much money to spend, I always try to find the best instruments available in their price range. And when I saw this guitar in internet, I thought I should give it a try. There were a couple of things that I liked about this guitar when I saw it in the internet. First of all, it has 24 frets, and this is kind of my personal preference. Then it had uh, original Wilkinson pickups, and I was just curious to test those, and this was a good opportunity. This string retainer has the rollers in it, this means less friction and more tuning stability while using vibrato. Well. I actually never tried those uh, vintage 6 screws vibrato system and I heard a lot of rumors, some of the guitar players say that uh, this is the best sounding vibrato ever and others say that the, it has a lot of tuning and stability issues uh, but then again I wanted to test this myself and to build my own opinion so this was a good opportunity as well I hate uh, by some of the guitars this kind of squared neck joints where you can't uh, grab the last frets. And here is everything smooth and rounded and uh, this is a good thing. And this guitar doesn't look like uh, another straight knockoff. It's kind of hybrid of my two favorite models, Fender Stratocaster and Ibanez RG. Made actually a good impression, it had nice finish, and I thought maybe the guys behind uh, this guitar actually tried to put a mind in it and uh, bring up the best product uh, on the market for the price. So I decided to test it. Of course, I didn't know anything about this brand, so I decided to check it online. And apparently, G Great is a part of Gyeongjou Kapok company that was founded in China back in 1957. It claims that for many years Kapok branded musical instruments have been well known for exquisite craftwork, elegant design and beautiful tone. It also says that due to professional technology and great efforts for better quality, the company has been awarded for special honors for many times. Well, high quality my ass. Actually, when I first tried this guitar, I was like, what the hell is this? If you ask me what's wrong with it? It's about everything. I had to fix a lot of production mistakes before I could be called this piece of wood actually a guitar. And so let's count all the mistakes from the top. <coughs> Tuners is the one thing where you can't possibly fuck up. Or can you? 
I know a lot of people prefer tuners from the certain brand or certain weight or certain ratio. Well, I'm not this picky. I used custom shop guitars, I used high quality standard guitars and I used low budget guitars. And the one thing I had never had problem with were the tuners. Until I got this one. There are two things that I expect from these things that should help me get my guitar in tune and my guitar should stay in tune. And that's all. And actually, if you take a look at this Indonesian-made Ibanez RG7321 that I bought on eBay for 150 euro used, well, there were a couple of issues and I wanted to upgrade a couple of things, but the tuners actually are the same that I've got here. They work fine and I don't see a reason why should I replace those. And by the way, here is my cheapest guitar. The Harley Benton, it was 90 euro new. Harley Benton is a brand of the German's most popular online music store, the Doman. And actually it sounds pretty fine and it can compete with much more expensive guitars. And for crying out loud, 90 euro guitar and the tuners, they're just fine. They work fine, they keep my guitar in tune. And I don't know how hard can it be to get a good tuners. And speaking of Harley Benton, those were the tuners that I put in this guitar instead of original ones. The original ones got stuck on the halfway around, some of them looked so as if they were falling apart, and actually I could never get this guitar in tune. Actually, for those of one who wonder why my how to get more YouTube subscribers video has slightly out of tune guitar, well, that's why. I figured out ever since I want to test this vibrato system, I should get the locking tuners and the Harley Benton were the cheapest one available. And they are actually great. I can't complain and to be perfectly honest, I put a couple of these tuners in a much more expensive high quality guitars. And so this was a huge improvement. So let's move on. <coughs> Speaking about the nut, I would probably leave the original one when it was a fixed bridge guitar, but ever since I like to abuse my vibrato, my guitar has always gone out of tune. Actually, there is a good video in YouTube made by Will's Easy Guitar how to deal with this kind of problem. I actually tried to make a proper cuts and polish them the right way, but in my case this didn't work out and I don't know, maybe I don't have this luthier skills or maybe this kind of plastic wasn't supposed to be used in the first place. So I replaced the original one with the graph tag. And you, I actually did the whole video review on the Graph Tech nut, you can check it on the description below. And actually this was a huge improvement as well, so my guitar stays in tune. And I don't have anything to complain. So let's move on. <coughs> you can't talk about frets on this guitar without using the F word. They are made of some kind of cheap metal, probably recycled uh, tin cans or something like this. It's very soft and some of the frets are already worn out. And secondly, they weren't properly installed as well. I had to hammer down some of those and some of those I had to file down and... Seriously? What the fuck is this? Well, I could get up to the point where I can play this guitar, but still, refreighting it would be a kind of good thing. And so, let's move on. <coughs> and here is another typical thing about mass-produced cheap guitars. It's a lack of sustain because of the problems in neck joint. These guys prefer speed over quality, and that's why the body of this guitar was covered with multiple layers of nitrocellulose lacquer, including the neck pocket. And actually, the body was polished afterwards, but not the neck pocket. And the layers weren't even in the neck pocket, and that's why there was a gap between body and the neck, and the whole vibrations of the strings were kind of killed there. And that's why this guitar had no sustain. 
So I scratched the whole lacquer until I saw wood and that's improved uh, the sustain. And so let's move on. Actually, I have three complaints about the whole electronics of this guitar. First of all, these assholes weren't able to connect the volume knob properly. When I turned the volume knob all the way down, it didn't do anything. So I had to solder it the proper way. Second, after six months of using this guitar, I have a problems with the pickup switch. When I choose the bridge position, sometimes the signal gets lost. And I don't know if I can fix it by cleaning the contacts or should I replace the pickup switch altogether, but you know, this is a big minus for the quality. And the third thing were the Wilkinson pickups itself. Those are made somewhere in Asia where the production costs are lower than in the USA, and I thought that maybe they actually managed to get good sounding pickups for not this much amount of money, and those pickups maybe are good for upgrading the low budget guitars, but it actually wasn't the case. Wilkinsons are actually the same squashed uh, sounding pickups that I want to get rid of. And just for the test, I put uh, Dimarzios in neck and bridge position, and this was a huge improvement as well. The thing is, those Dimarzio pickups I actually planned for another guitar that is being built for me right now. And so I'm looking forward to test a different uh, sets of cheap pickups to find decent sounding ones. So stay tuned for the news. And the last thing were the string saddles. They were made of some kind of soft metal, similar to the frets, and the strings actually started to cut through the metal. And so I replaced those with something more decent, but the vibrato system itself and the springs are still the same. And so, after all these upgrades, I managed to get some kind of decent uh, sounding instrument. <laughs> And so, in conclusion, if you see G-grade guitars, avoid them at any cost. Maybe there is a perfectly good reason why there are no many G-grade instruments on the market, and in fact, this is the first one that I've seen. And I don't know, does anyone actually have one of these guitars? Does anyone have the same kind of experience I had? Or maybe I've got just the fake guitar and the G-grade instruments are perfectly good. Just leave the comment below. I managed up to the point where I can play this guitar, but still it's a kind of challenging. And maybe the frets are pretty low and I haven't got used to these kind of frets. But then again, this guitar is made of decent wood. So truss rod works perfectly well, neck is straight and I think I'll keep it. I'll try to make a couple of upgrades, for example, I'll try to refret it, I'll try a couple of uh, low price pickups, and so if you're interested leave a comment below, uh, so I decide whether I make a couple of videos or not. On the other hand, I had a good experience with this uh, old school uh, six screws vibrato. And this is the first time I've uh, been using it. And so I think I'll make a separate video about how to deal with this um, vintage uh, vibrato system. And so that's all for today. Have a nice day and keep on rocking.